So far we have seen the infectivity and the pathogenesis of uh, Clostridium perfringens. Now in this video we will be talking a little bit about treatment and as, as well prevention of this bacteria. Now for the treatment of Clostridium perfringens infection, now one thing you should know is that this kind of infection is very very dangerous uh, and if it is on set, if it is uh, done at a particular time, it is extremely difficult to go against it without using antibiotics. So we must use antibiotics antibiotics right but otherwise most of the infections are related with the cellular debris which are generated after the tissue necrosis right so actually cellular debris generated generated after tissue necrosis Okay, generated after tissue necrosis. Now, usually, now, now in all these cases, this this task is the most important task is to release uh, this cellular debris, is to take this cellular debris out. So get rid of this, get rid of this kind of cellular debris, right? So get rid of the cellular debris is the most important part because otherwise this debris will contain will contain cell destructed materials and obviously they will contain toxin now if th these things remain they will cause further further damage right so to minimize the damage we must remove all the cellular debris after that and along with that we need to consider or administer antibiotic in high dose in high dose now what do we mean here the antibiotics we usually use are of penicillin type penicillin type and among the penicillin type we can use penicillin G penicillin G and among the tetracycline range among tetracycline range what we can use we can use doxycycline okay among the penicillin range we use doxycycline Okay, so these are the different antibiotics we, that we can administer along with the removal of the cellular debris. Okay, to, to control the growth of uh, Clostridium perfringens. Now, in other cases, we can also use uh, cephalosporin antibiotics, but uh, these are rare. And usually, this, this kind of treatment that I have talked about, it is very common for the myonecrosis or myonecrosis or gas gangrene or gas gangrene okay or gas gangrene anyways otherwise for the enteric kind of infections we can also administer this kind of antibiotic and in those case we need to be very careful about processing our food so for the prevention part I must write processing processing of food is important processing of food is important and proper processing of the food a proper uh, what you can say heating or boiling of water and food is very important otherwise this kind of enteric infection will be set place right so if you consider all these things it will be helpful but in all cases and uh, vaccines are in some cases are also available like tetanus uh, tetanus case and all these things anyways but uh, this is uh, the role of uh, this antibiotics along with uh, the preventive measures which will control the development of the diseases caused by clostridium species now that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you